Did you ever get a chance to see Musk? Yes, he's taken earnings calls from the building that I used to work in. Three hacks, PM interview hacks that worked for you. I can get really deep into what we're building, how we're building. Uh, I was always the person who was just playing and tinkering with things. So the first season of Kota Factory was 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 like this is spot on. Like, consulting was really popular, so like obviously consulting was on the cards. What was your work during that internship in that hedge fund? What were you actually doing? These are really cool internships, yeah, for an undergrad. How are you getting them at such a young age? So that was my nice. first proper product internship. The baseline for a good working space is like you shouldn't be upset about it on a monday morning did you have other offers what were those offers that you were competing brown against I had the fact that uh, adobe really operated like a startup even though it was a bigger company what is really good to use a research you have a cup in your hand how do you like that cup uh, do you like the design of it kind of the revolutionary colgate idea right if you mm-hmm. increase the size of the nozzle the uh, customer will never get to know you So have you ever been involved in a process where you wanted to bring more positive emotions in the mind of a user? Hi, if you're new to my channel, my name is Shatakshi and I am on the Shatakshi show where I invite a lot of dear friends, a lot of my mentors and a lot of people with whom I rub shoulders in the last 10 years as I've worked in management consulting, strategy, public policy, entrepreneurship and international affairs. A lot of these people are going to be industry leaders, public policy bureaucrats and of course senior managers across the industry. So feel free to hit on the subscribe and the notification button so that you get notified whenever I'm doing cheers with them on chai and you get to do cheers with me on chai as well and with that let's get started very excited to be to have you on the shatakshi show and uh, it's very meaningful given that we have had a very uh, interesting working relationship with you once taking a gti product management master class now guiding and coaching gj fellows on largely product management uh, welcome to the show how are you doing doing good it's been it's been interesting couple of weeks so uh, and also we're like getting towards like the holiday season here so it's nice it's a good time of the year halloween how was halloween for you did you celebrate halloween i am not much of a halloween person i tried it <laughs> uh, i i remember i think when i came here in 2015 I was a little bit excited about it, and I tried it once, and I was like, "Ki ye to nahi ho payga." Uh, <laughs> not, uh, What made you say that? It's like there's too much work goes into like the whole costume situation. Uh, that's true. And, that's true. Uh, I think very quickly I realized that I'm not much of like a rage party person, anyway. So rage party person. So I'm like, this is nice, but uh, not not really my jam. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I like the explanation, which is rage party person. So, Shitesh, very excited to start this chat. You and I know a little bit about each other professionally, but I would like you to start your and I would like to start your entire podcast with your story. What's your story, yar? Right like from childhood. Uh, what did you want to become? Uh, what was it like growing up? Uh, where did you go for your schooling, your college? How have you landed up where you are? And then we can take it forward from there. So, what do you? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, so haven't thought about that in a while, but uh, sure. Uh, I mean, I I had a very standard childhood, like most other people have. Um, um, I like my parents are 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 from Rajasthan, so like. Um, uh my my dad for as long as i remember my dad was posted in amdavad he was a doctor with uh, cghs like the central government and my mom is a gynecologist is so like she she was doing her thing in jodhpur and and dad used to keep visiting and i have two older sisters uh like much much older than me so like i was always the the like ultra youngest and um I guess one thing that I that I credit to that whole setup was uh, uh, I was always the person who was just playing and tinkering with things. I think uh, uh, I think the standard response to anything found broken in my house was like, oh, like Shitaj must know, or like Shitaj must have done this. Uh, 
so that that was like uh, like a like a childhood uh, very heavily focused on education uh, like it was always about like study and and studies and everything um and i think my uh, not so so in general i think i had a pretty big influence from my older sisters um uh, who were always like or like we didn't get to do this so like you should give it a shot and, and so on and so forth so i think that that was always there so like part of it was jodhpur part was part of it was like amdavad um when we moved there and and then i think i i did what a lot of people do which is like two years of quota um so that was a very nice. how was that experience. it's a i i don't know how to put it uh, uh it was an interesting experience to say the least i um i'll say the 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 first season of quota factory was 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 like this is spot on like i i think they've wow. cherry picked uh everything like even the great end of the show was like the yes this is this wow. reminds this great end reminds me of quota wow. they did uh, a good job i've heard that from a lot of people who have been to quota absolutely uh co- co- it's it's also really interesting right cuz like you were like 16 like i you like you just finished your 10th grade and you think that you're almost an adult but you're not like you're you're like you you're freaking 16 uh and you're there and and the city just revolves around anything and everything that 16 to 18 year old kids could do so it was just a very unique unique experience like i i don't think the kind of setup that you have in kota is like available in most parts of india but anyways i did 2 years of that and then um uh i think i think i saw my the first iron man movie when i was in 11th standard in in kota and i think nice. that was a big reason why i was like electrical engineering is maybe a thing that i should consider cuz like maybe one day i'll make my own iron man suit uh uh i think first year of college uh all of that was was disillusioned and i was like uh electrical electrical engineering is not going to work out for me <laughs> uh, uh so i think i think the good thing that i did during once i realized that i think in in my first year i think a good thing that i did for the next 3 years of my college year was i tried a lot of different things like i i i i made sure i had some or the other form of internship throughout the 3 years um and like consulting was really popular so like obviously consulting was on the cards and uh, this is dc if i'm this not is DC. wrong but dc this is dc this is which yeah. year this is 2010 2010 to 2014 okay sorry uh, you could get yeah so i think after like electrical engineering was out of the scope i was like let's try other things consulting was popular so i was like must try consulting at some point in time um my sister like who was like who's much older she had moved back from the us to delhi uh, at that point in time uh, and she was like a big source of information and and and, and also like guidance so like she would tell me about like oh there's like also work in finance that you could do or like there's also work in tech that you could do so i think she was really helpful in like helping me understand what are some of the things that are interesting uh, that i would like to do so um i think my first year i did an internship just as like a call center person wow. um and that was interesting it was just something to do i think the idea was to just like at least try to do something let's see what like wow. life is out there so that was my first year second year i because i had done some customer service work uh with a company like with with health card i uh found a like unpaid internship with snapdeal and snapdeal at that point in time i i don't know if they were calling it specifically product managers and product team but like it was essentially a product team like the work that the the team of people were doing was basically let's figure out what are some of our challenges internally and let's see what we can do this to, like, is still you were in college pre final year yeah, this is second year of college basically wow. second, 2011 yeah. yeah so like after so the first summer and then this is the second summer so second Hi. summer was uh, with snapdeal and that was also like a really interesting piece of work uh, i think 
everything from the previous experience kind of added a little bit because like i could say that like yeah i've done the work in call centers so like i i can go talk to call center executives and be like hey man i've done this can you tell me nice. what are your challenges and so on and so forth um so that was like really interesting um bad kind of set me up for another internship in the winter of the third year uh where i um worked with a very small it was a very small hedge fund and they just needed someone to like like write excel code and i was like yeah sure i'll do it um obviously there was like the 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 the, the privilege of like getting to know these people and like being able to like talk to these people but the idea was to try it all and like see what's interesting and what's not interesting um so i did that in my so third year i did two internships one was summer one was the winter of the third year wow. and one was the summer of the third year uh i i basically never went home was my thing like my parents <laughs> were, like, every big break i never went home um it was a big piece of complaint that like my mother had throughout through and through uh and partly because like i i i was just really bored in amdavad so i was like i'll find something to do <laughs> Uh, I I can vouch for it. I went to Ahmedabad two days. I I could relate. There's not much to do in the city. I mean, I I will say I not not to not to say bad things about Ahmedabad because the food scene <laughs> is great. So like I have a list of things, but like after a after a week, I'm like like I've checked everything that I wanted to eat. Now I want to go back to do something. Um, right. So that's kind of uh, that was the third. So that 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 was the the small hedge fund internship. that was the first time i was like i don't think i want to work in finance it seems like a very interest like it's not it seems interesting but like i i like when i talk so to if you don't people, mind walking us through what was your work during that internship in that hedge fund what were you actually doing i was doing very technical work for okay. the long, long so they had a long shot team and uh, okay. that was the first time i like even under, like i had i even had a sense of like what is it even mean to go long, long yes still sure. not like but i must there. say pretty young to figure that out i mean it was i i i will still not say that like i i am crystal clear or i was like crystal clear i had a general sense and, and right. it was it was in the ballpark cuz i remember when i when i was trying to explain to my mother what a long shot team does she was like tum satta lagate ho matlab that doesn't seem like a right, right internship to be doing. like cuz cuz i cuz i was trying to be smart and i was be like oh it's just not like it's not really investing it's just betting on whether it will go up or down up and or like, not right hindsight wrong choice of words um but <laughs> uh, but so i was doing very technical work i was uh, doing two things for them one was like a some like i i think it was a sequel based reconciliation of their tables and Okay. It was interesting because like I like I didn't know SQL and I was figuring it out sure. on the fly and I sure. was just, like doing stuff for them and then sure. reviewing uh a, they had a very simple code which like just generated their quarterly uh reports which was all based in reports. R so okay. I was like yeah I'll I'll like comb through it and I'll like find if there are bugs or anything in it so that's kind of what I did like very non critical work. but um hmm. uh, it gave me the opportunity to like sit with them and see what they were doing day in sure. and day out and from that i was like this is not something i would want to do on a regular basis it seems like a lot of like they seem very confident in what they're doing and i don't think i'm that sort of a person <laughs> to be able to like call the shots with that level of confidence with what you're doing so like i think i'll take a step back from this Sure. Uh, then I think the summer of the third year was my consulting checkbox. I did a okay. internship with Accenture. It was a very okay. standard consulting internship. Also, again, not a lot of core consulting work because, like, I was third year, a third year kid. But I did a lot of, um, again, like the final handoff deliverable making for them. Like, uh, we were trying to like. I think they were trying to do they were trying to like save they were trying to implement some cost savings for like a construction client and sure. they did like I was doing a lot of work to like build the final deliverables that explained 
how much money is being saved on a month over month basis and like it had a projection of like what are you going to save eventually and like it, it was a very detailed description of that and yeah. then I, uh, and so then, then if i were to sorry to interrupt these are really cool internships yeah for an undergrad how are you getting them at such a young age i'm sure a lot of people will have such questions it was a it was a build up one over the other uh, so i think okay. the first so what these all offline not through campus these were not through campus LinkedIn? these were not through campus um i like i said i was I, i was privileged that like my sister and my brother in law knew enough people that they would like wow. shoot an introductory email wow. but i think to give myself a little i don't time. think that led you to have your final foot in the door i'm sure there's no, a lot of homework they, they, at there your were, end there were a lot of re- there were quite a few rejections there were quite a few um, like the everything went through like a series of interviews and i prepped sure. for them but like they they always i i i was very very privileged to like get that introduction email from wow. them and, uh, sure. it i i till date i actually get stressed out about email connections because i have <laughs> anxiety from that time and i was like oh that email must wow. be perfect i must uh-huh. write the best first email so that like i can continue yes. with that uh wow. So I, so that was that was Accenture, and then then I came back, and then I think college campuses start like placement started, and and then I think ZS was like a third company that came, and and I, I think I got an offer from ZS, so that was very clear, and that was in hand, and the rest of the year was very chill. Um, so that during that time, I I think I. <laughs> During that time, I gave my GRE just for okay. fun and um, lots of chill. And then be- between the college end and the start of ZS was like a good three month period, and I wow. still knew people at HealthCard, so I kind of like went back for those three months. And this time it was like wow. a product internship, so that was my nice. first proper product internship, and and that was really nice. And this is 2014, I suppose. Yeah, like summer 2014. Wow, I don't think PM was known or even cool for that matter. I think PM sector started picking up around 2017, 2018. Yeah. And you've been doing this since 2014, so that's pretty cool. How how was it when you did it yeah. for the first time? Yeah. So, so I think that was like a very pivotal moment. I had some really good mentors. Um, till. in touch with them and i think that was the time when i was like pm seems like a like this tech area seems like a really like this is a good job like i could do this or i could do that consulting thing and consulting was really sure. popular in my school so like i was like hey, this is a tried and tested thing and this is another thing that i like it uh i think i evaluated a couple other job offers around that time but then i was like okay zs is a good name to work with and like the base thing that i was i was hearing was that zs will train you really well for like a lot sure. of other stuff so like you should give it a year so sure. then i joined zs by that time i had so like i think it's my second pro, pro my first project with zs was great i loved it okay um, it was like an mna it was like an nice. mna project uh, but i think starting my second project i was like this is This is the repeat recycle of the same thing. So like, mm. I, it's not like I'm, like I think the big differentiating factor for me from like comparing it to the to the product internship was that, okay, oh we're solving a problem in both spaces, but it seems right. like I'm not owning this problem through and through. I agree. Um, and the big thing for like for me it was like he, it's the same thing that I have to keep doing again and again and again and again. Until I'm an expert in this, and Correct. that was not something that was exciting. Like I, I think I, I went back to some of the chats that I had with my my mentors at Health Card, and they were like, um, "You should like like the baseline for a good working space is like you shouldn't be upset about it on a Monday morning." And um, yes, I agree. Um, But that's such a beautiful quote you are saying that the baseline is that you shouldn't be upset on Monday morning. But yet I think Shitesh. most of the people and i could safely say 70 80 percentage of them are not happy monday morning they are still doing it so i really like that you were over indexing on the career choice pretty early in your life yeah 
yeah <laughs> i mean that, that that's a that, that that's a pretty that's a thing that like i think everyone in my family does so like i wow <laughs> <laughs> it flows through yeah it was uh uh how do i put this so like i don't know if it's a which region it is is it hindi mein kehte hai na ki ghot ke aise yes so i yes. think uh, like like what you do and like like i think career and education was a big part growing up and i think it stays uh sure. it it stuck around for me uh okay. but yeah i think that was zs so i think around that time i think second project ke as per i was like ki uh i think i i don't want to do this and i think i want to maybe like do a masters or something and like i want i want to be where there is more tech happening and i want to like sure. go for options there sure um, so grad school was a very very deliberate choice i think one of the big okay. reasons why i picked brown of all the other admissions i had university. was um brown university was like like i had spoken to someone and they said ki it's a really flexible course program so okay. you don't if you don't mind sharing did you have other offers what were those offers that you were competing brown against i had uh, i had boston university and i had um, university of illinois uh, chicago nice. very nice uh, sorry go on so i think the key thing that 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 was highlighted to me was uh, brown has a really flexible course structure so like you don't walk in with with a course structure that says ki these are the courses you want to do it. you're going to do in first semester second semester third semester fourth semester and so on and so forth there'll be like these are of all the courses you can take you must take at least this many from engineering but beyond that you can take anything that you want wow um, nice and they had some really interesting courses on cognitive sciences and they had some really interesting courses in uh, human computer interaction Uh, very interesting those were some those were i think i'll i'll still give a lot of credit to the core engineering courses i took but mm-hmm. i think i apply a lot more of the cognitive science courses um and hci courses in my day to day so i think that was really helpful wow. got it um because i had taken those courses and because i had all of these previous internships it was a lot easier for me to get my summer sorry internship. i'm just going a little bit back yeah. and i'm curious about the hci course and the cognitive course as well if you yeah. could just very briefly explain what did you really learn especially in hci and yeah. the cognitive course as well so the hci courses were really interesting because they kind of started bringing in the perspective that you're not just here to build for the sake of building or you're not just here to build things for yourself you have mm-hmm. to consider who are you building for and will they yeah. be able to understand what your what your intentions are without you being in the room to be able to explain that uh, got it and they introduce a lot of these concepts like how do you talk to users how do you like try to get unbiased opinion uh what are what are the things that you want to consider when you design a solution how can you design okay. better uh how can you keep in mind how people perceive design in 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 how they learn about what you're trying to build so i think all of that was like really useful and the cognitive science course was interesting mainly because it started it was he was it was a really good professor and um he kind of like flipped machine learning upside down he was like um nice he's like machine learning you've the traditional way of learning it is uh, like thinking about these models and thinking about the math behind it and all the algorithms we're going to start with how does human vision work and back from that and then apply machine learning for you to learn a little bit more about how like vision works uh wow. that is yeah that, that was a new idea great course uh wow. it was a mix of cognitive science neuro neuroscience and and computer science and that was interesting because i think that just added to the whole layer of like can you go from a very engineering point of view to a sure slightly more easier to understand for other people sort of point of view and then build engineering around it rather than you know like going up like going bottom up uh from Got it. engineering 
to like the final. Also, should say I'm not sure if you have mentioned this for our audience. Which degree is this that you pursued from Brown? And I also see you doing. You're sipping your chai. So cheers with you and chai. It's which tea is this? This is this is the the caffeine free evening tea. Oh or, my! I am having nice. the unhealthy one. So, but I think I deserve it. I'm in India. I need all my chai share oh, that no, I've been missing. Out. If this was a morning, this would have been like a big cup of very strong coffee. So, <laughs> I, I, the only Fair reason enough. I'm not drinking actual chai is because I will not be able to sleep for the rest of the night. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I agree. Um, ha, which degree was this? This was this was uh, mas- masters in computer and electrical engineering. So, like a very standard traditional. computer engineering degree got it i may take a tangent here and of course would love to hear the rest of the story as well should it especially in indian society and in fact globally also the value of mb is just so deep rooted mm-hmm. because parents also understand it right so when you were experimenting so much and you were you also had the merit and the uh, aptitude to get into consulting and the pms of the world what made you choose this niche degree over something generalized as an mb it did that thought cross your mind if yes how did you go about with that process of elimination as well if you could walk me through that i mean for starters i was just a year out of school so i knew that like sure an mba is not mm. a real option right now fair enough to i think i still knew that i want to be closer to tech like i i sure like one of the strengths even for me today as a product manager is that i i i can get really deep into what we're building how we're building um i can like i i can have a pretty serious engineering conversation even if i'm like not sifting through code i can sure. try and understand what is the logic what are what like what is the structure we're trying to make um sure and and that kind of like really helps so i wanted to stay closer to tech i wanted like i i think that's Sorry. that's why brown was a good option because i was like this is tech this is core engineering but then i can right. like stretch on beyond engineering and i'm not just tied to like just core engineering here fair enough got it so brown happened yeah. and then uh then i think the next good thing that happened was i managed to uh get an internship with adobe for the summer Uh, nice. I worked with the Creative Cloud team uh, at Adobe, and this was the Seattle in office. US. Yes, Seattle. Uh, so it was the Seattle okay. office. Uh, that was another great experience. I think I uh, loved working with them. Uh, I think what I really liked about it was the fact that uh, Adobe really operated like a startup, even though it was a bigger company. So there was a lot of wow. autonomy. There was not a lot of, at least for for the summer that I spent, or at least with the manager that I worked with. um sure it was it was like here's a problem go figure out how to solve it um uh, wow and uh, it was a pretty broad problem i think uh, i think what the, the, my problem statement was uh, can you help us figure out how do people perceive cloud tech and uh, hmm. can you help us figure out what are the other areas that Can you help us figure out what are the areas that we can expand beyond our current offering? Uh, sure. The context is like this is what 2016, so right things wow. haven't completely become like we all use Google Docs now, but like this sure. time yes. when, like we were still uploading files to the cloud, and you know like people were trying to figure out if if like Envision is going to be like all cloud based design tools are going to be like sure. the big ones or like are are Are, are are we going to like keep downloading software and so on and so forth so i think sure. that was a great internship um i think the user research part of what i had studied and what i what i hadn't done up until now uh explicitly was like really like pushed forward in in there um my take away from there was like the the pms here like seemed to do a lot more user research and uh that was, sure. that was really helpful to understand and i think great time uh then i came back and i think there are two things that i that i took from there which was one i think i want to work for a startupy place and two i think what was exciting like i what i felt was exciting to me was products where you know we're doing some sort of a change 
to like how people behave sure. on a regular basis i think part of that was the whole cloud research thing where where i was like constantly talking to people who were and i was constantly trying to understand how do you work and there were tons of times when i was like there has to be a better way to do this like you you cannot be doing that uh and i found so i think what was happening around that time was a company called redfin had come into our college for like hiring and that was really exciting and i was like oh man like they're they're selling houses online um wow i didn't get through their interview but i got sure. through another interview called roofstock um uh, which sure. was a series b startup then um i recall that shitish i will have to interrupt you here also because i'm curious about one thing that you mentioned around user research with adobe right it mm-hmm. taught you a great deal especially you're saying that us at least back then had way more culture of user research mm-hmm. if you were to take we were to take into level 2 of that what is really good to use a research in the world of the what questions are pretty much avoided let's say in indian ecosystem at least that what your experience in 2016 was and were covered here if you could walk us through that i mean i think good user is, there is i don't hmm i don't think there is a formula for good user research i think um it's a framework sure and the f- basic rule of that framework is talk to your customers as much as you can um sure. and just try to get as much of their unbiased open ended free opinion as as you can as much as you can as frequently as you can um because you you will you you if you're building something for the masses you're never going to know what they want and you can you can only run a certain distance based on your own assumptions about what people want it is extremely extremely important to keep validating what you think is also sure. the thought process of the masses and i think that's 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 it like you can you can do it in a bazillion ways you could you could do it with usertesting.com you could do it uh, you could do like casual conversations you could like do it with like proper uh, you know like mocks you could do it with like the help of a, an actual trained researcher uh sure. the two things you want to do is you just never want to not do it and you uh, you want to just get as much unbiased opinion as possible and that's it that's that's what i would say sorry i have a different version to that story and i'm happy to hear your two thought to sense on it i genuinely believe if you have to make good products listen to the user mm-hmm. if you have to make great products don't listen to them and by when i say don't listen to them i mean that hey hear them out but don't involve them in the solutioning process let's say so i would love to hear your two cents on what do you think of listening too much to the consumer uh, so i i think at a point of time at least that what his biography surface is the movie surface the guy was pretty clear in his head what is did he really want because he understood the consumer but didn't really hear them a lot on solutioning part of it so if you could share your two cents on it i mean you're never you going to the it? user yeah you, you you're never going to the user and say you you're asking them hey what do you want me to build next i think if if we were to do that then i mean i i don't need to be doing Correct. what i'm doing uh you're going to the user to understand what their Fair experience enough. is with what is in their hand uh so if you have i don't know if sure. you have a cup in your hand how do you like that cup Uh, do you like the design of it why do you buy it do you think it's comfortable do you use it for all of your drinks which drinks do you not use it for um what Fair would you, what what else would you like to have in that cup uh the the idea isn't to say hey tell me what to add in your cup and like it, it's Fair it's likely enough. that you're going to get 10000 different answers and it's also likely Fair that a lot of people will be like no my cup's fine i, I don't need I, i don't need to tell you I, 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 if you're asking me how to improve this cup, I don't know. 
but if i ask Fine. you what is wrong with your cup the way it is right now so two very different questions and you'll get two very different answers and correct because there is no framework depending on what what is the problem you're trying to solve sometimes you're talking to the user just to ask hey are you happy are you unhappy other times you're trying to actually dig deeper into like understanding how to improve things other times you're just trying to understand if like this is even something worth investing in or what? like would i rather I just know. i don't know invest in a saucer rather than a cup i think at the heart of things and at least that has been my philosophy as a product owner at ggi mm-hmm. which is that i personally like to observe people then ask them yeah uh, and i have another consulting example for this so without taking the name of the client or the industry we were working for a client who was selling hair oil and uh, they were trying to increase the nozzle size which is kind of the revolutionary colgate idea right if you increase the size of the nozzle the uh, customer will never get to know your consumption will increase and then the customer will want to come back for the second bottle and then we realized something which was that this idea doesn't work in hair oil because the user at least in india is keen to take the oil in his or her palm and then apply it so the yeah. size of the palm is fixed so the nozzle doesn't change but i had a counter hypothesis to that that there are few users in india who might if the nozzle size is small might be keen to apply it directly on their scalp as well mm-hmm. and we went and asked the users this question all of them in the research study denied yeah and i have a hypothesis i think they denied it because it was not culturally sophisticated answer yeah but had we observed them in their bedroom we would have found few people using it it's kind of a similar answer i think there was a study around climate impact study in retail clothing as well mm-hmm. thereby people who said that they care about climate impact when purchasing fashion clothing if you open yeah. their wardrobe most of them is just fast fashion so do you apply this observing the user versus hearing the user kind of feedback yeah i mean so what you're basically describing is like just different types of studies right so like you could do a moderated Correct. study yes. you could do an unmoderated study because like it really depends on see the the thing is that you can sit down and define the right way of doing user research uh but the right way of doing user research is the way of user research that matches with the way your company and your product organization is trying to build product uh which takes into yeah. account the resources you have the the time you have the the how fast you want to deliver something kind of situations right uh, i'll i'll give you Fair an enough. example right when so my last company was bill um uh, we make we make like bill make software for for uh you know like small businesses like small medium businesses like an accounting firm and so on and so forth you have you like you have to like spend a lot of time with the user doing both moderated and unmoderated research because you're yeah. building a big product you're building a product that takes its sweet time to get shipped and you don't change things actively it's a business ended product so like you can take your time and you can do more in depth research you yeah. want to work for like you work for i don't know like like roofstock did not have the the resource or the time to actually yeah. like invest in that level of user research but you still want to yeah. talk to you you still want to get a sense of like how people are like even responding to your, to your to your product right uh sure. some of the, like I'll, i'll i'll give you examples right when when i had started at roofstock like two months in uh i was like sitting we we like the we was a pretty fresh product team and we had a new designer and we were like doing these uh uh product interviews and and people were like well we don't really understand how you're different from zillow and it's a big statement to come out of it when like you're basically sure. being compared to you basically like if someone says you are a listing website zillow is a listing website why would i come to your website oh, you were like makes sense but we're not a listing website you can buy the entire thing on the on the on the website and they were like oh well wasn't clear to me uh mm. three months later you fast forward so that that kind of like gave us the need to like build a just a simple informational page that was like how does this work oh. 
Like, how do you like even communicate to people that like, hey, this whole thing is online. You're never going to leave your house, but you can buy an entire house in a different state. Fast forward three months, some people were like, well, I understand that you can buy it, which was a win for us. But then they were like, but what if I want to sell it? Like, you're you're just done. Oh. How, how do I manage it? Um, right. Right. And you're like, well, we need to communicate to people that we're not just about buy and like leave you in the dust. If you want to sell it, you can come back to us. If you want to manage it, we'll hook you up with a property manager. So all of this comes wow. from talking to the user, which sure. in our own head, we were like, it's it's a pretty, like, it's obvious that we have a property manager listed on every property. Why would people right. know that it's, we're also helping you manage the properties? It's like, these are the things that like come up when you talk to users. And I bet if we had the time and the effort to like, or the resource to like, you know, like have just a dedicated researcher who spends hours and hours just talking and curating uh, their notes and like doing unmoderated tests. We, we would have found a billion things to improve on the marketplace, uh, thousands of different ways of like filtering properties. But we also had other things to ship and we were a small team. So we were like, okay, we have something. Let's move on. Let's, let's you know, like the whole build fast, break fast, learn fast thing. Like that's, yes. that's kind of like, so you got to pick your strategy, but it it should always just be on, on the back of your mind that like, hey, I, I don't want to do this in my own bubble. I want some input from how people are reacting to what I'm building. Got it. I, I like that answer. And we will soon move towards your uh, former cool boss, Tesla PM journey as well, who is creating some ruckus at Twitter as well. Uh, but I have an, another question and I want to get your viewpoint on the emotions around the product so and I have another hypothesis I think products that can make you smile and that can give you a feel good factor are the best products in the world so a very small example I was on a website and when the login button uh, next to the login button there was a dinosaur because that was synonymous to the name of the firm and when I hovered over it there was three terms came three alphabets came which was grr and I was like dude this is cool and I smiled right I instantly connected with the brand because I was smiling by using their product on the other hand for example I have never been able to get my head around reddit and when I think of the product I kind of always wonder what kind of vision of the organization is are they building a trolling platform or a mean platform um, are they trying to create a good world or rather a bad world so have you ever been involved in a process where you wanted to bring more positive emotions in the mind of a user? Um, a, a lot of my answers are going to be varies. Uh, okay. Positive emotion is a good emotion to work with. Um, but uh, what you build is always contextual. Uh, so you, what's Again, like being able to understand your user is really important here because sometimes, like let let's say um, let's say that 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 let's just take a nice animation that like gives you something cool as an example, right? If I put that at um, I don't know if I put that at a at the the submit button for a health query form or like a, a website where like you're talking about serious health issues and then there's like a nice fun animation fun animation it's it's not yeah. it's not gonna work out very well right or at a uh, funeral maybe but yeah so yeah so or like so so there are times when like the user is looking for delight they're like we call it moments of happiness like there, there are right. moments of happiness spread across a product um, usually it is when you're doing some sort of a, when you're completing a task that you were hoping to do at that product. So, sure. um, like if you're at a banking app, like making a payment or like making a purchase, like end of a purchase, these are like usually happy tasks. So like you can usually end, do nice things and like make you feel, make, make feel, make a user feel good about it. Sure. There are other times when a user just wants to like get past, like, uh, like take another example right like I could add the nicest animations and like the nicest messages uh, on an app 
at your login and onboarding screen but mm-hmm. if the goal for you as a user at that point in time is to just get past it and get started then i'm mm. probably going to bother you with all of that even though my intention sure. is good. so sure. that's where the happiness factor comes into play and you from from a growth perspective happiness happiness points are a really really useful thing like uh right. we think of we think of happy moments like at roofstock we thought of uh happy moments as the ones when you make an offer when your offer is accepted uh at purchase closing or like at delivery emails uh right. or like at invoice to go when you receive Milestone. money these are like right. happy moments and these you use these happy moments like you you build happiness and then you also right. use to like ask for feedback ask for reviews ask for a referral right. um right. so like the, the growth has a lot of use case of these things uh right. but happy moments it it just you need to recognize the context of it and you need to like apply it with an understanding of what is what is someone trying to do here fair enough that's helpful let's move on from rooftop if that works so yeah. the next kick that you had was with was tesla so Lovely. i did if you could also I... talk through three hacks pm interview hacks that worked for you that would be great way of starting that uh, three action. interview hacks that worked for me hmm. i think having your story crystal clear um okay i think that's really important um uh, and what to, do you mean by that like when someone asks you what you did why you did like i guess having a very clear understanding of your own timelines like what did you do when did you do it and what the what what happened after uh um, sure. just having a consistent clear flow of it is is really important without you know like i think it it kind of like plugs in with the next thing i was going to say so kind of like the same same thing just know the reason for everything like you have to have a why it's never sure the you have to have a why and the why has to be like based on your own thinking and analysis it it cannot be and should not be that i got the advice from someone or i heard yeah. this from someone or i thought this was a cool thing maybe sometimes saying that like i thought this was a cool thing and i wanted to explore is a is a valid reason but more often than not you want to like have a very solid reasoning for your actions i think having the why is is important um what else being good with data Anything? i think being able to okay. uh i think i i i i think one of the strongest things that you can one of the nicest badges that you can display is that like you're good with data and that you're sufficient with data and you can understand and analyze data on your own i think uh were uh, you given all... a data problem in the interview uh sometimes like i think a lot of the interviews nowadays include at least on the growth side of it include sure some sort of a walk through an analysis of an ab testing uh sure. challenge and why you're making those decisions uh sure. but like even otherwise i think being able to claim that like yeah i look at data on my own and i don't need support in a regular yeah. interview is is a pretty pretty useful and a powerful tool to keep in your own shed fair enough um, and then the third one is just i think be prepared with what are the products that you like and why like these are some like the common questions i think you should always be prepared for you should keep Makes updating sense. them um if you get an opportunity try and think about why you use whatever you use what do you like about them why did you just it, it takes about 10 minutes to like think about well i listen to a lot of music on spotify but why did i start listening to music on spotify in the first yeah um, i agree it's a it's a lot good... about self awareness maybe rather than just moving just just yeah. getting stuck in this hectic routine so i sense that yeah. got it okay talk yeah. me through our uh, tesla journey here yeah so i think tesla te- tesla was a very calculated move uh so okay. i think i'd done two and a half years at uh at roofstock and i think a really good advice that that so i i I'd interviewed for a company that i really wanted to join and i think the vp of growth who interviewed me 
he said i'm going to i'm going to turn you down by the way but here's my advice for you uh you've uh, it was like a final round it was like here's my advice for you you you're great but uh, you've only worked for a startup so i would say at least try and get some experience with a big company uh um, okay and uh, maybe in a couple years uh, and yeah. I, i was like it, it was a it was a two step higher <laughs> uh rose okay. so i'm i'm, wow. I'm glad I, i didn't they didn't take me i think it was a good decision i would have okay. stayed uh but uh, i think that was that was that that advice kind of stuck with me i was like yeah i mean i've always technically only worked at startups and uh maybe it's worth at least trying a big corporation um so tesla tesla happened um I think one of my bigger concerns before going into Tesla was um cultural fit is a big part of when you are interviewing Agreed. for a product role especially because you'll be like working closely with a lot of teams if you're not a cultural fit might like they might not be happy with you so yeah. one of my big concerns was like is is Tesla going to like label me as like a poor cultural fit because like it's a very hard driving place uh okay. but then I was like I kind of like like the product that they're doing it fits with the kind of things that I wanted to do especially the role that I was in I was on the vehicle uh sales top of the funnel side so the website side of things so like sure. it was in alignment with the kind of stuff that I was doing which is changing the way right. people buy purchase um, right uh and I think right off the bat it was like a pretty intense experience I think uh sure harsh working hours uh well not wouldn't call it harsh but they were like extensive working hours uh um, quantify for us on a weekly basis or on a daily basis on an average pre pandemic it was usually 9 to 6 every day sure. plus the commute uh once everything became remote i think we were very easily going 8 to 7 uh wow. lots of late nights 12 uh, hours wow. uh and then uh, pms are kind of like catch all at least in the my the team that i was in so like anything that sure like anything that you need to know like the final answer and responsibility lies with the pm so like comes with a fair okay. decent load for it uh do you think pandemic was hard to you because of just a remote setup or is it because tesla as an industry was disrupted because less people were purchasing cars i'm just cars and thinking about no, no, cars no, no. We so what really triggered the change um uh, the change was that there was lockdown and uh, we were working from home and uh, every okay so kind of the shift in setup led yeah basically like everyone everyone had more work than they could do uh, same stuff the, with me at pcg during that the day. barrier was that you are commuting before 9 and you're commuting after 5 so it's like blocked by 9 sure. to 5 and then that right. barrier moved away so we, it was very, it just very conveniently expanded getting on calls yeah, yeah. i agree um, okay i guess my baseline with tesla was that like you know like how zs was the thing where like they'll drill mm. work in you uh tesla will drill excellent execution in you like flawless execution at the wow. fastest pace possible uh wow. and uh, you're constantly looking for just better more innovative ways to like do things um define perfection and define if possible how are they able to do it with such good speed given that by scale they are no longer a startup So if you could define both of them they operate them. like a startup though like i think that's okay. very clear in everyone's head that like okay we are we are valued at a, as a big company okay. but we need to work so, like a startup then so for example when you say that the delip, the speed is really fast i am kind of for example thinking of delivery time uh, to provide the car at someone's home or so, could yeah, you give so more you examples to, so you need to comp- so one big one big uh, light bulb moment for me at tesla was this is a company with different types of engineering so sure. um vehicle engineering is a completely different ball game i had i'd never worked in that space 
okay. I worked in the space for internal application. So like, uh, we managed. So like the team that I worked with managed the websites in all the countries. So that website includes what the website looks like, what the website reads like, the content, the translations, um, the the way to get leads. How do you like pass on leads? Um, so that was like the bulk of the work that I managed, and then the stretch of that team also managed like the ordering system, the routing system, the sure. you know, the inventory management, entire you know, supply chain of the the point A to X. The, so yeah, like I think in one of the, I think in one of the earnings call, uh, Elon phrased it as the operating system of Tesla, like the company Tesla. Sure runs right. on the internal software that is internally managed by internal applications. Um, Fair enough. And the Did you ever get a chance to see Musk? Yes, he's taken earnings calls from the building that I used to work in. Nice. Uh, I have gotten extended CCs. Like he'd be on like level two of the email because. Nice. So the inter- So if you think about the website, right? Website is the first line of defense for or first line Fair of. Right anything for tesla so right. a lot of the urgent asks like we were the marketing wing basically so a lot of the urgent Fair asks enough. came to our team so like the so like if you think about so i don't know if you so like in in the middle of all of this elon would often like tweet these pages like oh we're hiring for the autopilot page just fill this form on this page or we're hiring for the sure. bigger factory just fill this form on this page uh, how many like, people work for Tesla, or at least in the office that you were in overall? Good question. I don't know. Uh, wow. You were. I. It, it, hey, at times we little overwhelmed. So we are twenty five right now at GGI. Yeah. I can't imagine. He seems pretty hands on, yeah. For running two ventures, both of them. I think SpaceX yeah. also is now profitable, and he's leading from the front. When you're saying that he's sending these emails around hiring, I mean he 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 is he is very hands on. Uh, he's really, but then yeah, like he he he's he's very he he's got an army of people who like I'm sure are on the execution wing for him. So sure, but he he is he is fairly involved. Uh, at least he was. Sure. I, like, I, I wouldn't. I don't know how much has changed in the I last. I think he should be with what is happening with Twitter. Um, uh, now going haywire, but go on. This is very uh, lovely story about Tesla. Yeah, but I mean, I think the baseline is just that, like, I was I was there for a year and a half. Some really exciting projects. Uh, I still, I think, a lot of the sense of urgency and like speed of delivery that I have, even in my current role, comes from that 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 time. But I think after a year and a half, I was like, I I'd like to like. A, uh, do something where I can own a number like that is more sure. focused, and then sure. B, um, I I would want to. I've given enough focus on just execution. I would want to like be driving the product vision somewhere else. So either a business role or a much more product heavy role, rather than just be on this marketing side. Is that what you're trying to say? So it was it was a product heavy role there too, but okay. I was, how do I explain this? If you think about any big tech company, right? There's like usually one leader, one one unit that is like leading the charge, and then kind of like everyone else understands that like we're here to support them. Internal Fair applications enough. at Tesla is very much a support piece because what's leading the charge for revenue is vehicle and energy products usually whatever is re- leading the charge for revenue is is in my opinion what like takes the lead um, okay. so for me i think what i wanted to then move on to was to actually be directly in revenue growth segment where i am signing up for a number and saying that like hey i would like to work towards or build products that directly bring in or like impact revenue and top line metrics and that's where I think, I think that was my point when I was like, yeah, I think growth is the space that I think I really want to be in because yeah. I'd like to be able to impact those those metrics more than just, more than like building things that impact two or three degrees below that that top line metric. Sure. 
uh, so I think that's when I joined Invoice to Go. Um, Invoice to Go was just a delight compared to Tesla. I think it was like I wow. think such a small team, and I think everyone was just so happy all the time. Right. I was so confused for the first month. I was like, what is? <laughs> Am I, am I missing? Is there like an internal group that I'm not a part of where you actually <laughs> talk about things Hearing that you're me. unhappy or is everyone just really happy? Uh, and this is still pandemic if I'm not wrong, right? This is early 2021. So yeah, like April 2021. Got it. Okay. Like like Invoice to Go was, was really, really a very happy place. Uh, uh, good Got leadership. It. And I think... Uh, uh, I, I think uh, my favorite example of showing how nice and happy people were. So we were going through a big rebrand and we were going to change the name from Invoice to Go to Get Pro. And okay. um, I think on the 1st or the 2nd of July, we were going to launch the new rebrand. And the 29th of June, we got the news that we cannot go forward with the name Get Go. Someone else has like claimed it as, as, a, oh. as a IP or, or something. Uh, it's a big thing, right? Like the entire company was working towards a rebrand for Get Go, and then right. on the night of 29th, we found that like, it's like I was pretty set to like just console my team and be like, "Hey, okay. yeah, like our work is not wasted. We can like, I'm pretty sure we can salvage it, and we'll figure out something. Just hold on." Um, and I think just that night we got an email from the CEO who was like, yeah, this has happened. Just want to let everyone know. Take tomorrow off. We'll figure something out. Um, okay. This happened on the night of 29th. 30th, we did barely did any work. Me and my engineering manager were like, we'll see what happens. But like, so far we were like, okay, it's not chaos. People are not like genuinely upset. And then I think on the 30, 31st or 1st, whatever uh, day was like, the engineering leadership came back and said, Hey, I think we can just go forward with it. We'll just not, not change the name Get Go. There's going to be some changes, but like we can just go forward. Yeah. With it. And uh, we went back to our team and we were like, this is the proposal. But like, if anyone has any concerns, say it now. We can fight back. This is like really weird. I'm sorry we're talking about this. And the engineering team was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> not a single okay. team. No one complained. No one was upset. Everyone was like, sure. Uh, wow. Do we have a little? Do you bit think it was flowing top down culturally? I think it was top down. I think the, I think a big part uh, of that culture setup and why people were happy was everyone felt like they were a part of it and they were in it together. No one felt like they were having yeah. to do things that they didn't want to do. Do it. Makes and sense. it was and how does that everywhere. happen? How do you inculcate that feeling in someone? One is giving ownership, of course, but yeah. beyond that. I think, I don't think it was, I, I, I don't know. I think you either have to A, start good from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I think the people that you have in the team really matters. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think ownership. Um, I yeah. think Invoice to Go was the first place where my engineering manager straight up refused to fill up all of the quarterly roadmap planning items from my list because you were like, well, not everything you're going to say is going to be done. I, I need to ask what my team wants to do. And I was like, wow. absolutely. And wow. we went to the team and the team was like, well, you're the PM. So you tell us which ones are the more revenue impacting. So I nice. gave a stacked list. And then they said, well, from this list, I think these are really cool. And these are really cool. So we picked those. And no one, like, it was it was just the most mutually functional road mapping exercise. Wow. I never had to, like, fight to get something on, on the road map. Uh, it was great. I, I love working with that team. Uh, I genuinely believe in terms of institution creation. When you're creating a value in the society, it is far far better that you do it this way even with a limit of scale yeah. then you achieve unlimited heights with a very poor culture yeah. because looking back I think you would have stepped upon so many people's emotions and whatnot. because I get that vibe from you when you're saying happy things right you just yeah. feel that I, I once felt it 
when i was working with group on which later on nearby just i felt like going to office and it that very rarely happens when you feel like going to office you have friends yeah so you worked with them how long or how I long i joined them in april i think okay. we launched the new thing in july and then i think second half of july we got the news that we got acquired by bill.com i recall um, you shared yeah. that with me too so we got acquired the acquisition closed in september bill.com is a great company like the very like i think the ceo nice. has a real knack for music i think he's a jazz player um nice so great offers generally uh, bill.com in my opinion was a little bit slower in terms of product development but the product mm-hmm. is of the type that requires slow steady but solid okay. consistent build Uh, okay. Invoice and going with the name itself, are they into invoice building, etc.? Bill dot com is back end, back office, back office accounts payable receivable. It was a really interesting acquisition because Bill dot com's thing was accounts payable and invoice to go's thing was accounts receivable. Receivable. So, oh, so they acquired two companies. They acquired Divi, which was which is a expense management, and then invoice was. Uh, Payable, so I think the idea was to like have a full suite Make of products. Full. Um, so I think I I continued working on the invoice to go growth side for like even the year after, um, and then I think I I I shifted over to like a little bit more mid sized businesses. I think yeah. uh, I think my year with invoice to go gave me a lot of confidence in the idea that like yes I. I like driving revenue numbers. I can do right. it. I would want to take yeah. it a step further, and I want to like build a little bit more from the ground up for like a like if there was a smaller unit within the company that I could like just go in and be involved from the beginning to like figure out what it's like to build it from the ground up. I think that would have would be like great next experience. Uh, so I tried right. that with a different so- unit. I also want to understand product-led growth. Mm-hmm. So, for a very long period of time, Shitesh, for example, at Global Governance Initiative, when we did a lot of things with product, it improved the feedback. So, we are obsessed with students loving GGI, not just liking, right? Which is that net promoter school needs to be always in the nine to ten range, but it never led growth for us mm-hmm. until, for example, when we started partnering with employers. that hey we are partnering with dcg etc 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 and then suddenly that new product division led to growth for gji because i think at the end of the day people just wanted jobs mm-hmm. so have you also seen examples where you tweak tinkered or introduced not product line but introduced something in the product that led growth because you said that you got got the confidence that you could drive revenue figures yeah so Okay, I'm going to take a pause. It's going to be a bit of a monologue. Uh, product-led growth is a, I think, a very broad statement, right? Uh, yeah. You have to, in my opinion, you have to understand what will lead. Like, there's many, very many ways of like building growth in your product, right? Like, yeah. if you're usually building directly for the consumers on a mass scale. Uh, then just pure product led growth i think is a great idea right so like sure. but if you're if you if your product is a little bit if you're a decision maker for who is going to say grow that at the end of the day is not just about how many people are using it right who's paying for it uh sure yeah like how long are they going to continuously pay for it also matters right? so like, think, like so, so for example bill.com so like at invoice to go our consumers were the small one to two business people like one one employee to employ like sole proprietors who were running their own business right so yeah. i could i was reaching out to them directly i was offering them a product experience directly that was leading to growth right so the yeah. subscription experience mattered the onboarding experience mattered the sign up experience mattered standard product funnel uh because the decision maker and the user were the same person right correct yes bill for example has a slightly different structure right hmm. 
the decision maker is like the person paying is a slightly different person the person using is a different person sure. and right like you have an accountant who is using bill.com but like you have a small company ceo who is like making the decision to pay the subscription fee right sure. so growth will come if more people who want to buy bill.com buy bill.com sure i could try and market to the accountants but maybe sure. they, like like internal accountants who maybe have the decision power who maybe don't have the decision power right sure. i could talk i could market to someone who has the influence over the ceo right sure. and so for bill.com the accountant channel was a big growth driver got it because those are the people influencing the decision making for the ceo but not someone who is in the product day in and day out Sure. They are telling they are, like they may be coming back and telling us that like oh yeah it's not been a great experience so like maybe we will not use it next year it's an annual contract right so if i think about ggi right like if if the if the if if i can have someone else pay for it for employment sure the better channel than just building the platform itself because the platform is for people who are in it Um, Correct. Already on it. Right, but like, yeah. how do you get people into the platform and pay? So, the 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 idea it it keeps changing depending on like what metric you're trying to increase. Uh, like Fair Tesla enough. was product led growth, but then it was the vehicle team, like just the vehicle team. Any changes that they would make would drive up or down the sales of the car. I can tinker Make on that. the website all I want. It'll not. It'll it'll increase the lead. But if the cars are not great, shit. Yeah, I agree. Right? The product has to be good. Got yeah, it. fair enough. Got it. Continue. So you are not at the same firm right now, no. right? Yeah. So yes. I, it's two weeks. Uh, I think I. So I tried a different space within Bill. dot com. I thought it was a little bit boring. So I, I moved to this other company called Better Help. Uh, what sure. they do is offer therapy online. Uh, Very nice. So, like anyone who needs therapy could go. They'll get matched to a therapist. You can have a session. If you don't like it, you can change the therapist. And so, like that's kind of the base product. Uh, I it's a mostly B to C company. So, like sure. Um, because like the the models built like that. But I'm going to be trying to see if we can grow the B to B side of it. Where like. Fair enough. So it's a perk, right? Like it's a, it's yeah. a benefit available from work, and see if we right. can get more people to use it. So that's the general idea. Sure, definitely a possibility. I remember at least at BCG and one more firm I recall, they used to provide such therapists, which is also a very beautiful segue. Shitesh, I was about to talk about mental well-being. It's another theme that I follow on my channel. Uh, I recall our. a separate conversation where we have had chats about you missing home and you also keen to come back after a point of time to india you've been living in us uh, all alone i'm sure you have friends etc how do you manage your mental well being there are a lot of people especially students who run who manage their life by themselves right so if you would want to talk about how do you manage your mental well being yes uh it's going to be a slightly old people answer <laughs> okay <laughs> i look forward uh i think it's very important to know what you truly like and what you truly enjoy and okay. what gives you what is important to you and what is not important to you um the broad yeah. answer um but why i say it is um like like i know for a fact that i am an introverted person I like time. Yeah. I like spending some time by myself. I do right. not like rage parties. Um, right. I don't like getting drunk or wasted. It's not my thing. <laughs> uh, so I know what I like to do, and I make sure to like make time for that in my week. So like things that give me pleasure, uh, things that that I like to do, and things that like give me. The kind of mental energy back that I need to be like doing everything else, um, I I I try to keep thinking about them. I try to know what they are, and I try to make sure that I make time for them. Um, yes. It is important to not 
I don't know how to put this. It is important to not look at an external idea of what a good fun life is and yeah. try to do that but to know yeah. for yourself what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Uh, I agree. There are a billion people who need to meet a lot of people on a regular basis because that gives them energy and they energy that, right yeah. so if if you're that person and if you're stuck with me in a room then go out <laughs> and Sorry. meet those people uh and don't stay in the room with sure. me just because I don't want to leave the room uh because sure. I know that I don't like what will give me energy is to not meet those people so I'm not okay. I'm not going to leave the room but if you think you need that energy and you need to go out then do it and don't like hold yourself because you think that someone else has displayed a certain version of a happy um self. happy self and you you don't don't follow things blindly just like figure out the the framework and not apply the formula as is this is how i like to think about it i really like that answer so this is a new habit that i picked up because Uh, we my, we all work virtually at least at GJ right that means that i just cannot afford to work from home always and that meant that i realized that i really like the combination of staying at home one day and alternatively going to coffee shops for just gaining energy right yeah but that also means that shitish in the social media culture and i know this is a little ironical because this will go on youtube eventually uh we are not hearing ourselves out right what do we like especially the young people 24 25 and at least it seems like you have a common pattern of finding what you like personally and professionally as well which is a pattern you have followed uh what really triggers self awareness in you do you do meditation or is it is it just genes which is again ghot ke pila diya hai so what really uh-huh. worked for you I don't know I'm, I I I don't I don't I don't think I specifically sit and meditate um Okay I I think I just I don't know I just have I just have always found a lot of time to just sit by myself and like think about things and uh yeah. when I am doing that then I'm thinking about what was good and what was not good and um I think that's it. I I don't know how I got the habit. I I just have that. I maybe I was always a, a I I maybe I was just maybe being a little bit anti-social as a kid like help helps me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fair enough. I was I was not the most popular kid in school and I was not surrounded by people all the time. So in a lot of time uh as a kid by myself and I think I've just made those habits. Um I don't know. Um yeah. I I'm sorry I don't have a clear answer. You know, I think I always believe that as Steve Jobs said in that famous Stanford talk that you join connect the dots backwards. Um that just happened and I really kind of resonate with your story as we are taking a full circle in this podcast. My uh, I'm the youngest in my family. Um uh, my it was in fact my brother who went out of his way to actually tell my father that she is not going to study engineering she will go to st stephen's college and i owe a great deal to my elder siblings uh, i don't think i would have started on a good footing had it not been for them and the entire objective with this candid podcast is many many people out there are not as lucky or as privileged as we got in our journey network eventually or through the pick so very kind of you shitesh for taking out time date night uh, that to sat it is saturday night for you so yes uh, thank you so much once again for doing this here totally my pleasure i told you i'm a very boring person so, uh, <laughs> no not at all this was one of the, the best stories i heard the, the most exciting thing for me <laughs> today was the podcast so happy same here uh, uh, totally my pleasure perfect all right i hope this was helpful and i have always maintained if you need more help to 100x your chances to get into management consulting public policy and product management feel free to check out my education venture globalgovernanceinitiative.org where we run an impact fellowship program and an all time mba program and if you like this video feel free to give it a thumbs up and of course share it with your friends so that they get to know about all the cool interesting and insightful content i'm bringing out for all of you absolutely free of cost ciao